Next is contraceptive devices that are mentioned in your book. Again, in and around that, many questions can be asked. So you will have to study that topic. Sexually transmitted diseases and ART, assisted reproductive techniques. Whatever you're seeing in this particular page is all easy kind of questions that can be asked. Nothing complicated here. Most of the times the questions are easy to. Hello, my dear students and welcome to PW English. This is Chaitra, your botany teacher. And in today's session, we'll be seeing some of the most important topics that are repeatedly coming in NEAT biology. So when you look at the bio paper, you know half of the paper is 360 marks, right? Which is biology. So if you want to reduce your pressure um, on performance in chemistry and physics, you would want to increase your marks in biology. The higher your marks in bio, the safer it would be when it comes to physics and chemistry. So in bio, what should be an ideal score? The first question. Out of 360, it is not difficult to score 350 at all. There could be a few here and there difficult questions which might um, be quite challenging for you when you read them and might cause a little bit of anxiety and nervousness which can um, you know lead to you skipping the question because we know that NEAT has negative marking as well. So let us look at these topics. I will start with class 12th as you would be more um, relating to class 12th because you have written just your board examination just now and if you are let's say a student who's taken a break of an year and is re-attempting NEAT then for you probably class 11th and 12th will look alike. So even in that case doesn't matter. Let us look at the topics of class 12th what and all are important. When we start with the chapter sexual reproduction in flowering plants you will see especially if you pull out the paper of 2024 and of course last two three years or rather five years for that matter you will be seeing a lot of question on pollination types and agents, right? You'll see, you'll be seeing a lot of questions on this particular topic. So I would suggest you prepare around this, including the definition and examples. Then comes the process of double fertilization, which involves triple fusion and which involves um, thingamy, how it is unique to angiosperm and double fertilization, the entire event can be asked. You can also expect a question around female gametophyte, the embryo sac, seven cell eight nucleated condition, quite frequently asked in many of the examinations. Coming to human reproduction, you can expect questions from spermatogenesis and oogenesis, how exactly the gametes are formed, how the division occurs and um, yeah, questions around this. And the next one is menstrual cycle in the uh, hormones, the phases of the hormones, which hormone is released in which particular phase of menstrual cycle, luteinizing hormone or FSH, the graph that they have provided also becomes quite important there. So you will have to have a very clear or rather good idea about this particular topic. Next is contraceptive devices that are mentioned in your book. Again, in and around that many questions can be asked. So you will have to study that topic sexually transmitted diseases and ART assisted reproductive techniques here also all the types included will become important because repeatedly questions are asked from this particular topic ratios when it comes to uh, principles of inheritance and variation the phenotypic ra uh, ratio rather than the genotypic ratio the ratios let's say of test cross monohybrid cross dihybrid cross it could be ratios of um, incomplete dominance repeatedly asked blood grouping and its inheritance how exactly blood grouping works the parents have so and so blood grouping what could the kids have the kids have certain type of blood group and what could parents have so that kind of a question is created from blood grouping most often sex determination male heterogamity and female heterogamity the various examples around it repeatedly asked so you have to prepare that also and then disorders in disorders to be very precise most of the time it is chromosomal disorder which is asked however you cannot neglect mendelian disorders remember mendelian disorders are also important and here you should be also knowing the definitions of polyploidy and aneuploidy so chromosomal complements that you see in Klinefelter syndrome turners or even um, down syndrome for that matter 
Then we come to molecular basis of inheritance. You should be knowing about transcription and lac operon, repeatedly asked topics. Here and there, they have also asked about the structure of DNA. If you want, you can go through that. But I feel structure of DNA is something which you will still be able to recall. A last minute quick revision, even if you haven't done, you'll be able to recall as compared to transcription and lac operon. When we come to evolution, homologous and analogous organs and the examples around it, definition including become very important. Human evolution, the various uh, forms of human evolution, important infectious diseases. Um, you have infectious diseases, AIDS, cancer and drugs. Now this comes under, of course, human health and disease. The questions usually asked are easy type of questions. Now from this class 12 topic, I will just tell you what are the difficult ones later. Then we have in microbes in human welfare, you have examples, everything included. It could be antibiotic production, chemical production, enzyme production, anything, uh, microbes in household products, all the examples and then comes biogas plant. Some of the questions which are uh, asked is around this in microbes in human welfare. Then when you come to biotechnology, you have PCR, polymerase chain reaction, um, BT cotton, insulin, ADA, RNA interference. If we are talking about organism and population, population interactions become important. A lot of time, whatever questions they ask is around population interaction. In case they are wanting to make the paper a little difficult, they can ask you calculation based question on death ratio and then uh, death uh, rate, sorry and birth rate okay but yes in organism and population population interaction cannot be skipped then when you come to ecosystem pyramids become very important they can ask you pyramids pyramids of biomass pyramids of number pyramids of energy repeatedly asked, but then easy questions come from that particular part uh, productivity also can be asked productivity also becomes quite an important topic when we are talking about ecosystem in biodiversity and conservation the questions are usually around species area relationship species area relationship repeatedly asked and then the um, evil quartet evil quartet here alien species examples are repeatedly asked and then recent extinctions also can be asked whatever you are seeing in this particular page is all easy kind of questions that can be asked nothing complicated here most of the times the questions are easy to moderate i can say in class 12th what is the chapter which will increase the difficulty of the paper it is most often when you are talking about increasing the difficulty it is the genetics and evolution unit Principles of inheritance and variation, molecular basis and human health and disease. Human health and disease also, the questions are almost easy. They have a lot of potential of giving you tough questions from molecular basis and principles of inheritance and variation. Even in these two, if I have to choose, it would be molecular basis of inheritance. Now here, like I said, in menstrual cycle, the hormones, they can play around with the hormone concept and the questions around that, that can increase the difficulty. But otherwise, yes, overall, uh, the paper, like I said, difficulty level, these chapters can decide. There are various topics, of course, where a lot of difficult questions can be created. But for some reason, if you look at the previous papers, this is what they choose for, okay, choose from rather. Now, let us come to class 11th. I know if you're especially in class 12th, you might be dreading class 11th because you can't remember um, but then you can always opt for the last minute quick revision of class 11, especially for bio, might not work for physics and chemistry, you would need a little more in-depth knowledge. Uh, why am I saying bio? Bio can still be covered in the last one month, provided you have some basics. It will not work if you don't remember anything from class 11. I'm being very brutal and honest here. You will need some amount of, you know, preparation or let's say you're very good in class 12th and in last one month you have to prepare only class 11th. Even then probably your scores can improve but then 360 on 360, I mean complete full marks might be a little difficult but we should never stop trying, right? Coming back class 11th, 
rules of binomial nomenclature in living world chapter and taxonomical hierarchy of wheat humans housefly and mango there is a big tabular column given repeatedly the questions come usually from here then when you come to biological classification it is fungi and viruses viroids and prions from fungi a lot of questions have been asked including the examples the life cycle the features of each group and the steps in sexual reproduction as well uh, viruses viroids prions are quite simple and easy and straightforward questions are asked there's not much info on viroids and prions anyway in your book then when you come to a plant kingdom, algae and then heterosporous pteridophytes can be asked. Usually the questions are for some reason concentrated around algae. And then a little bit on the life cycle here and there. But yes, algae, heterosporous pteridophytes, if you still are able to cover in last moment revision, should help you a lot. In animal kingdom, of course, features and examples can be asked from any phylum. Any phylum it can be asked, okay. So overall the features and examples become important but I would still say phylum chorita is becomes a little more important as compared to other. Morphology of flowering plants example can be picked from anywhere of that particular chapter. Family Solanaceae also is quite important. So you should be knowing how to read the floral formula, how to read the floral diagram or create a floral diagram. Examples very important around morphology of flowering plants. Dicot and monocot anatomy comparison in the sense dicot stem, monocot stem, what is the difference or between stem and root also they can ask you the difference. Uh, leaf, dicot, monocot, what is the difference or they can even ask you uh, dicot and monocot stem difference. If you have covered the differences between the root and the stem and the leaf, then you are pretty much done with the chapter. From here a lot of questions are usually asked. One of you years they have also asked questions on tissues like parenchyma and cholenchyma. You can just revise that. But I am of the understanding that you have studied this in your lower classes as well. So this tissue part should not be that difficult. And this also should be a little bit easy only if you have done your practicals right. If you have done your practicals right, this also shouldn't trouble you much. Okay. However, speaking of all of that, I think anatomy of flowering plants, no, I don't know. It's not thinking rather. Uh, if you observe the paper, the weightage for anatomy of flowering plants is less. You, you can expect one question. Few of the years, there have not been any questions asked at all. Then we come to frog. Structure of frog entirely important. Cell chapter, if you see, endomembrane system, whatever organelles are included, that is uh, ER, Golgi, and then you have lysosome and vacuole, they become important. Structure of nucleus becomes important. Then in uh, biomolecules, enzymes become a little important. The feature, nature of uh, enzymes, the characteristic features of enzymes important in biomolecule chapter. Cell cycle and cell division, mitosis and meiosis. In meiosis also, lot of questions on prophase 1 and its sub-stages. Many or year repeated questions come on this. Then we come to plant physiology. In plant physiology, photosynthesis if I take, chemiosmosis hypothesis, many questions have been asked. C3 and C4 pathway has been asked examples of c4 plants asked c3 in c3 plants they have asked how many atp and nadph get utilized so the idea of that and how the cycle is what is the product that is formed the first product that is formed that also you should be knowing and the three steps that are involved in c3 pathway then we come to glycolysis glycolysis all the 10 steps you should be knowing respiration in plants chapter this is all the 10 steps you should be knowing and you should be knowing where exactly substrate level phosphorylation occurs and where ATP gets consumed. So where ATP is synthesized, where ATP is getting consumed, the exact interconversion of the molecules, uh, conversion of the molecules you should be knowing, not interconversion. Krebs cycle again respiration in plants, number of NADH, FADH2 and GTP that are produced per pyruvate molecule or per glucose they can ask that you should be knowing. So this also becomes important. Respiratory quotient and in that also in respiratory quotient a repeated question that they have asked is on fat not that they haven't asked the respiratory quotient of carbs but fat they have asked many a times. Next is when you come to plant growth and development the topic of differentiation, de-differentiation, re-differentiation and PGR plant growth regulator the hormones that are there all of those hormones with their function functions mainly they can even ask you about the discovery uh, yes, but functions, if you want to study something exclusively, you can study functions. Alright, the chances of questions being asked from here is high. 
Then when you come to human physiology, various topics we have taken, these many topics. Respiratory volumes, frequently asked. Uh, transport of gases, frequently asked. Cardiac cycle, blood grouping, how exactly it works, the antigen and the antibody. Reabsorption of urine, important. Hormonal regulation of uh, urine, important. Then you have structure of muscle and the different types of joints that have been asked many a times in last five years. Central nervous system, neurons and in total if I say the disorders of a human entirely. So in human physiology, if you can... Pick up all the disorders from all the chapters and create a list so that you are able to remember what is the cause of that disease and if there are any symptoms that are men uh, mentioned. So you get a comprehensive list of all the diseases. Now if you are able to cover these many topics from various classes, various chapters, your work is done. Your work is done and it might help you score well in NEET examination. I hope this was helpful. I will see you in yet another video the next time. Thank you. All the best and keep studying.